Hey guys, so I am in Kiri Kiri, and this is Kemp House. Number two on the heritage list. But despite only being number two, it is in fact New Zealand's oldest building. How can that be, you ask? Well, let's dive in. Hey buddy. You wanna go for a dive? Oh, no. This is my attempt at a Tom Scott video, so you can safely skip this one if you just want to watch road tripping EV videos. But this video was inspired by a late night Wikipedia article binge in response to an idle question in my head. What is the oldest building in New Zealand? So to clarify that question further, we're looking for the oldest constructed, still standing human made structure in Aotearoa, a home to many since 1300 AD. So the immediate answer I found was this location, Kemp House. But I had other questions, like if this is number two on the heritage list, what's number one? And more importantly, how could the oldest building in New Zealand be of European origin when the Māori have inhabited these lands for so much longer? These are the answers I have found. One aspect is the contrasting architectural philosophies of the two cultures. Traditional Māori structures are designed to be adapted when needed using plentiful natural materials that decay over time but can easily be replaced. In contrast, European settlers bought a tradition of more permanent structures, like Kemp House, which used more materials and trades to create something designed to withstand nature. Another answer lies in the ways our different cultures record and preserve history. For Europeans, buildings and monuments are preserved and valued, whereas in Maori culture, oral storytelling and the environment that we inhabit have a higher value placed on them than mere structures. Finally, the rest of the answer lies in the way our two cultures have come together. For much of the early turn of the century, Māori culture was under attack by colonial government. Despite the Treaty of Waitangi, Māori land was stolen, villages were destroyed, and their very language was suppressed. But that doesn't mean that we don't have any examples of traditional Māori architecture, and my apologies in advance for my Tiarea pronunciation. Tehoki Turanga is the oldest surviving Māori meeting house and was constructed in 1842 and is the oldest surviving Māori building. It carries the weight of history, stolen from its owners in 1867, and displayed like a trophy in the Colonial Museum. It is currently being displayed at the Te Papa Museum, however there is ongoing discussion about it eventually being returned to its rightful owners. I visited Te Hoki Turanga in Wellington as part of making this video, but recording of the exhibit is prohibited, hence the file footage. So that's the oldest Māori building in Aotearoa, but there are still the ancient walls at Otua Tower Stonefields. They date back to 1400 AD. They are the earliest remnants of human activity on our shores. Occupying rich volcanic soils, fertile crops of Kuma were established, with walls of volcanic stone to protect the crops from wind and weather, creating a microclimate where these crops could thrive. Otuatawa was only recently given the recognition it's due, and coming in at 6,055 on the heritage list, it really says a lot about the priority given in New Zealand to non-European history. So that brings us back to the New Zealand Heritage List, and we decided to pay a visit to Russell to check out the number one slot on the list, Christ Church. Not to be confused with my hometown. I'm in Russell, the site of the New Zealand's oldest church. Yeah, it's an old, really old church in Russell at the top of the North Island. And the only reason you'd ever come here, if you don't live around Russell, or have friends in Russell, or have family in Russell, is to see this church, I think. So let us now return to Kemp House. Buildings started in the 1800s by both missionary carpenters and local Māori. This Georgian-inspired wooden structure was a monument to a faraway lifestyle for many colonials and represented a significant investment in this region. It was erected near the shoreline and under the watchful eye of Māori village Kororipo Pa, and a similar house was built for the chief of this pa, the most influential Māori leader in the Bay of Islands at this time, Honihiki. Kerikeri Mission House actually predates New Zealand's formal declaration as a British colony by nearly 20 years. Local Māori welcomed Europeans to build a house under their chief's protection and they repaid this in kind by sharing skills, tuition and outreach for their communities. It represents the cradle of our nation, built with cooperation between Māori and Europeans, working together to build a shared society. Built in 1822, Kemp House is the oldest surviving building in Aotearoa, which for historical buildings is pretty young, but New Zealand's a young country, so I guess it's kind of fitting. When I visited Germany some years ago, there was this air feeling stepping inside a building that was older than any human activity in my home country. It brought home the brief time that I will be alive and made real ancient history from the stories that we read about. It helped me understand just how young our country is. Our oldest building is 
just over 200 years old, and yet I walked through multiple villages with buildings that predate that by another 200 years. It was a humbling experience, one I will never forget, and a perspective that will continue to give me interest in tales like these. Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed that. If you're ever in the area, I highly recommend uh, taking the car ferry in Russell. We absolutely enjoyed it, it was a beautiful experience. So yeah, that's Russell. Yeah, I did go all the way to Russell just to get that shot of New Zealand's uh, number one historical balloon, according to the list. And I hope you keep on watching as we continue our journey south in future videos. Oh, I would pat you, but you're on a grave right now, kitty. Pat him anyway. <coughs> Touch the valley. No, I'm not touching that. That's a, de that's a death sentence.